Hey guys, Archer here, first year medical student. In this video, I'm gonna be going through your pressing questions that you submitted to me on Instagram about what I should be doing now after the UCAT to get into med school. The focus is on the rest of the medicine application process after sitting the UCAT. Earlier this week, I sent a Instagram poll to my followers on Instagram. So if you haven't checked me out, please make sure you do. And those questions were just basically whatever you could ask me about how do I get into medicine from now. I'm gonna go through the most popular questions first so that we can all get on the right foot. And then I'll go a little bit more into the specifics so that we can make sure that we have that advantage and secure our spots in medicine. So let's see what our first question is. So the first question I've got here is about interviews and interviews are a really important part in getting in many universities within Australia. There are two types that you have to worry about. There are the multi mini interviews, which are called MMIs and then there's also the panel interviews as well. In the MMIs they are a pretty stressful situation to be in because there's usually around 10 stations that you need to go to which you'd be in there for maybe five minutes or so and at each station there's a different activity that you need to do. Some of those activities are basically just answering questions that the interviewer might ask you but in other ones there's things like role playing in a situation or doing a puzzle or analyzing graphs. In each station, they're basically trying to test for a different aspect of who you are as a person. There are advantages and disadvantages with MMI. One of the advantages is that you get kind of a fresh start with each station, so you're not stuck with the same interviewer for the whole 30 minutes or so. And the other one is that you get a lot of small breaks in between. So sometimes you'll have a empty station where you have a rest station just to recalibrate yourself before going into the next station. And also going between the stations, you get a little bit of a time there to recalibrate as well. Those questions came eventually in a different station, but doing a puzzle was something that was a bit, you know, odd. Whereas on the other hand, we have those panel interviews where basically you just sit in front of uh, two people, for example, and they just interview you for 20 minutes or so. And then there's also sort of a hybrid between the two where it's a panel, but also MMI. So some universities are doing this where you might have a few stations, maybe two or three, but they're just panels at each of them. Now, just to briefly mention with this whole idea about interviews, it is something that you can actually prepare for to give you a competitive edge over other people. A lot of people go into the interviews just like, oh, just be yourself, you know, I'm a good person, they'll, they'll see that. But you need to make it very clear for them to be able to see that. Because a lot of the time people talk about lots of stories and stories, but don't actually share much about themselves in that. That way it leaves the interviewer with no sort of idea of what kind of person you would actually be if you were a doctor. And therefore you can't get the marks that you need to secure that spot in med. The next question that I've got here is about the whole application process. And there's quite a few here because people say that it's quite confusing. And I, I can agree with that because <laughs> when I was trying to go through it, I did a lot of reading and I couldn't really find too much uh, concrete information on what I have to do for each university. Unfortunately, it's a little bit different for different universities. So some universities might have interviews and that might be MMI or panel, but there's also ones where there's no interviews at all. This is a university specific thing. So it's something really important that you have to look into for each of the universities that you're interested in. So the whole process is basically broken up most of the time into three categories in getting into med school. You've got your ATAR, you've got your UCAT, and then you've got your interview sometimes. For most universities, there is an equal weighting between the three of them. But for some, there's, you know, maybe a bit more emphasis on the interview as well. Now, the thing is, with getting into med school, your ATAR is still really important, but there's also those two other things that you need to make sure that you're on top of as well. 20 minutes in the UCAT is pretty much the same as doing a whole ATAR subject. Even more in the interview, it's really important to have that good impression because your interview could be only 20 minutes long, and that's equal weighting to your whole ATAR, which you spent the year working on. So often the interview is the make or break situation between figuring out if someone gets into med school or not. So once you've done your UCAT, now you've got to just keep working on your ATAR and then also deciding to work on interview prep as well. The time in which your interviews might occur does differ quite a bit, but it does happen in your big holiday breaks after finishing year 12. It's actually part of the reason why I didn't actually get a proper break after finishing year 12 because I was worrying about getting into med school. Um, and these July holidays is when I actually had the time to sit down and, and relax. So some interviews like the University of Adelaide happen straight after finishing your year 12 exams. And that can happen in November. Whereas other interviews, particularly for those who are applying interstate, might be further and further behind. So I actually set my UNSW interview late in January. So the most important thing to focus on at this time is just making sure that you keep on top of your ATAR and focus on your interview as well. The next question I had is that actually about how do we figure out what universities we want to apply to and the order that we want to put them to. Now, a lot of this is up to personal preference, 
but there are some sort of things that you want to consider in making your priority list. And I've got a list here of the things that you should pay attention to. And this is on a website that I've linked to in the description. The first thing is, is doing a degree that isn't full fee paying because that can be very expensive if it's not covered by a uh, hex at all. The next thing is to avoid degrees which are not guaranteed or provisional. So for example, there's a lot of people who will go down the path of Bachelor of Medical Science, but that doesn't actually guarantee you a spot into the Doctor of Medicine. Another thing to consider is choosing the shortest degree in the city that you currently live in. Now, obviously that's a sort of subjective one because you might want to move interstate. Choosing the unbonded pathway over bonded, and we'll go through that in a bit. Choosing a degree in the state that you want to practice in. Now, those are some of the main things to take into consideration, but they can obviously change over time as well. So bonded versus bonded, what does that mean? Bonded basically means that you have to do a return of service to the government for them paying a little bit of your university fees. You have to go rural and do three years of work somewhere over an 18 year period. So you don't have to do it all three years at once, but you have to do it within that 18 year period. But also there's that unbonded option where you don't have to do that return of service and the government will still pay for a little bit of your university fees. Now the preference here is unbonded, but put down both anyway and put unbonded as the higher preference because if it turns out that you don't get the scores that you want, then you might still have a place in bonded. And the thing as well is that you can actually be upgraded from your bonded offer to unbonded. So it's really good option to have that just as a backup. And that's actually one of the mistakes that I made personally last year. I didn't apply for any bonded offers. It meant that I didn't get all of my offers straight away in first round. I had some in first round, but then most of them came in second round and after. Okay, so now I've got some questions here about alternate pathways if we don't get into our first round offers. Now, medicine is a big challenge to get into in your first try. And I'm very lucky that I was able to do that. So there's basically two ways that you can go if you don't make it into med school in your first try. You can head down the year 13 pathway where you repeat year 12, or you go into some random degree with the intent of transferring into medicine at some point. Most people head down the random degree, but have the intent of going into medicine uh, later on. So you might do Bachelor of Health Science or Bachelor of Medical Science, um, and then want to transfer into the Doctor of Medicine or transfer into the undergraduate degree and uh, restart the, your years at the university. Now, personally with what I had planned, if I didn't make it into med school, was not to go into university. My plan was to go into year 13 and repeating it. And there's actually quite a few reasons for that. And I'll explain the advantages and disadvantages and then you can make your decision on what you want to do, if you happen to be in this circumstance, of course. The advantage of going into year 13 again is that you can repeat some of the subjects that you want to focus on to improve your ATAR. It also gives you the opportunity to sit the UCAT again and go through that whole process and fight against a larger group of people for more seats in medicine. However, if you do head into a university, you lock out a lot of your possible options for med schools. If you're a school leaver, you have many options for undergraduate medicine degrees that you can go for. However, if you go into university straight away after year 12, and that's not medicine, then you actually lock out a lot of possibilities of med schools that you can go to for undergraduate transfer. There are some universities where you can go halfway through your undergraduate degree at some university and apply to another university, for example, um, you could apply to the University of Newcastle using your GPA, but there's not many universities doing that. A lot of the time, if you start a degree like medical science at one university, your option into getting into uh, med school is basically locked to that university only. And in my opinion, I think that can lock out a lot of possibilities and opportunities for you to get in. One of the reasons as well is that when you lock yourself to a university, you're actually fighting for a, a smaller proportion of seats in medicine and you're also going against everyone else who didn't get in the first try, but they're trying really hard now in their undergrad degree to sneak in and take a spot. Now there's a specific uh, pathway that I wanna talk about as well. So that's going down the Bachelor of Medical Science or Bachelor of Health Science and any sort of similar degrees as well at university. Let's consider the worst case scenario. So you were doing the Bachelor of Medical Science and you've now graduated after those three years and not managed to transfer into an undergrad med degree. In that case, you would have already been trying for the GAMSAT and trying to get into postgrad med. Now, if either of those two ways don't work out for you, you've then spent the three years to finish a degree which doesn't have much job opportunities after. Now, there is a little bit of an advantage by doing these medical science related degrees, but those advantages don't compare to just applying as a school leaver again. Moreover, you can still get some of that advantage by doing some 
different degrees. So for example, you could be doing something like nursing instead or something in health field or something like engineering that interests you, but you can get a job after it if medicine doesn't work out for you. And I think that's something that's really important to take into consideration if you're applying for medicine and trying to go down the university pathway. Personally, if I did not make it into medicine, I wouldn't be heading down the medical science route. Now, personally for me, I wouldn't be going down those pathways. I would have probably done something like engineering, which was actually my first preference before medicine, um, before I decided that medicine was something that I wanted to pursue more. Even though I would have been doing engineering, I still would have been doing the UCAT again to transfer and then maybe considering the GAMSAT as well. But if I did not get in at all, I would still have a job opportunity lying at the end of my course. So basically what I'm trying to highlight here, it doesn't really matter if you go for undergraduate or postgraduate entry for medicine. It's just that I want you guys to make sure that you're making the right decision in what course you do at university if you don't make it into medicine first try. Okay, so we got another question here about interstate applications and how it differs from applying in your own state. This is a hard question to answer because it's very specific to the universities that you apply for. But personally for me, when I applied to UNSW, I wasn't from New South Wales, so I had to sit my interviews a lot later. There was a different round for interstate people. But if you want to look more into that, then you're going to have to look at the specific application processes for the university that you are applying for. Okay, that's it for this one, guys. And if you still have questions about what I can be doing to maximize my chances to get into medicine on the first try, make sure that you send me a DM on Instagram or comment below and I'll make sure that I try and get to it as soon as possible. All right, that's it for this one. Thanks, guys, for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.